In this video we're going to be looking at op-amps again, but this time from a practical perspective, i.e. what are the practical realities when using an op-amp, our three terminal device, with our inverting, sorry non-inverting and inverting inputs and our single output. Alright, so what are the realities of this device? Let's come back to what we saw in our ideal approximation, where we had our two inputs, positive or non-inverting, and our negative or inverting input, and we also had this voltage source inside, which was our output. And this was all governed by the relationship V out was equal to the gain of this device times the difference between the input voltages. Now, in reality, a lot of this holds, um, and we can safely get away with those approximations we've made in the ideal sense, but it is useful to summarize some of the non-ideal characteristics, especially if you're doing some circuits which are very sensitive to noise or very accurate amplification. So, non-ideal uh, realities, we'll call it, of op-amps. Number one. Current flow here, IP, and current flow here, okay, IP is normally not equal to IN, which is not equal to zero. In other words, a small amount of current flows into the input terminals. So in an ideal sense, we say actually no, no current flows, but in reality, there is actually a impedance here between ground, All right, and it could be on the order of 100 kiloamps, for example. So there will be a small amount of current flow here. The problem with that is, is that you've got a sensor that can't supply very much current, All right, or if current flowing causes voltage drops, okay, somewhere else in the circuit, you get inaccurate measurements. So 100k is a nice large number, but uh, it still needs to be taken into account of if you're doing very accurate measurements. So, very seldom will you actually get the fact that these guys equal zero amps. Be very small, but not zero. Two. What I told you before was that AV was approximately infinite. Okay, so it has a really high value. In reality, the voltage gain is not infinite, but it is very large, and it's in the order of, depending on the op-amp you buy, uh, 10 to the 5, for example. So it is very, very large, but it is still not um, infinite. And then finally, the four, and I'm going to use these in blue, is the DC realities. This expression here says that the output voltage times whatever the gain is uh, equals, sorry, the voltage gain times the difference between those two inputs. Now that infers that if that voltage, uh, that gain there is 10 to the 5, and for example the voltage difference was 1 volt, then the output voltage here would be 10 to the 5 volts. Straight away we should know that V out cannot be 10 to the 5 volts, or else it's quite a remarkable circuit. So V out cannot exceed the supply rails. Now in this particular diagram we don't see that, okay? but if we bring back up to here, VCC and VEE, and if we were to draw for example a circuit here, okay, this is time, this is voltage, let's say that's 0 volts, and this line here is the VCC value, this one is the VEE value. Okay, so let's say we've got positive and negative power supply rails here. If I was to uh, put in a sine wave here, which is going to be amplified through this device, what you will notice is if it is amplified and the output voltage exceeds the voltage supply rails, this bit here will actually be cut off. And so what will happen is 
you'll actually end up clipping. So your output will stop and it'll come along that line there. And you'll get what's known as clipping where it stops at that voltage supply rail there. So if I do it in red, all of the bit in red you actually won't see. Right, that will all be clipped uh, by the voltage supply rails. So the DC reality there is, is that the output voltage cannot exceed the supply rails. And in reality, a lot of devices actually won't let you go right up to those supply rails. Okay, it might be VCC minus 0.2 volts if you're lucky, um, and correspondingly for VEE. Right, so non-ideal realities, there is some small current flow. Typically I can ignore that, but there is a small amount of current flow into the input terminals. The uh, voltage gain, okay, open loop voltage gain is, in, is not infinite, but it's still very large. Once again, I'm not so worried about that one because I never really operate in a open loop configuration. So the fact that it's not infinite, but it's still a very big number, doesn't bother me. But this one is very, very important in your design. All right, you're designing a amplifier to go from 0 to 12 volts, but you've only got a 10 volt power supply rail. I've seen many people do it. Um, so just remember that whatever these guys are, they constrain or limit V out. And often you won't get what's called rail to rail operation. Okay, let's have a look at the AC parameters. In the AC non-ideal realities, there's a couple of main ones. First of all, the bandwidth is finite. So remember when I showed you in ideal op-amps, our frequency response looks something like this with a straight line all the way up to infinite hertz. Well, in reality, it is not the case. Now, sorry. Instead, we have this type of frequency response, so frequency versus gain, and we still get a nice flat frequency response, but we have some frequency, some upper corner frequency where the gain starts to roll off. So above corner frequency, gain is not constant. And we would expect that, all right? All electronic circuits exhibit at some point a roll-off frequency in the high frequency uh, F, okay, with a high frequency input. So there is a limit to the output frequency of our op-amp. At some point it will be attenuated. Two, uh, in keeping with that, we also then have um, the slew rate, which is the maximum change in voltage over time, so the gradient there, uh, is limited, there's not infinite. Right, and those two are related. Okay, so the maximum rate of change of the output is finite, and of course we can relate that back to the bandwidth, um, because obviously as the frequency increases, the slew rate has to increase as well. And then finally, the output resistance or impedance is not zero. But it's not far from it, it's approximately three ohms. So our ideal circuit with a voltage source here would actually have a small resistor in it of three ohms before it came out of our output terminal here. So there is a relationship between voltage and current um, that is uh, governed by the fact we have this small uh, output resistance here. So in the non-ideal world, we see a few characteristics that we need to be careful of. Ones that I've said you don't have to worry about too much. Input current flowing into your terminals, not normally a big consideration, but unless you are doing something which has to be very, very accurate or cannot load the device it's connected to. The open loop voltage gain is not uh, infinite, but it is very large. Normally we don't over operate an open loop, so this is normally not an issue. Output voltage cannot exceed the voltage supply rails. Very important, very, very uh, common problem with a lot of op-amp applications, and therefore uh, something you will have to worry about in your circuit designs. In terms of AC, with the bandwidth being finite, unless you're doing stuff with high frequency, all right, 
then this is not normally an issue. All right, so high frequency numbers around, you know, greater than 200 kilohertz, um, then you might need to start looking at the data sheets for the particular op amp. And there will more than likely be an op amp suitable for your application uh, by uh, simply sort of shopping around and having a look on sites like Element 14. And the slew rate there is related to that. So this one is reasonably important, um, and that output resistance sometimes can be important, sometimes not. I think with values around 3 ohms, it's not normally an issue for the circuits that I design, but be aware of it.